So, with the uh, chaos that ensued on the opening weekend of Boysenberry Festival, we can now move forward. We've discussed it before that Knott's has an uncanny ability to multitask several projects at once and do a very good job at it. So, with that being said, how are those projects coming along? Now, obviously, before we go into the park, we're gonna go in. Before we go into the park, we're gonna take a look at a couple of those projects that are still going on outside the turnstiles, that being the hotel. And, uh, well, it's never too early to be talking a little bit of, uh, not Scary Farm, is it? I hope not. It's still 10 minutes till the gates open anyway, so we got some time to kill. Also, they're working on the uh, south lot over by the hotel, so we can look at that too before they start opening that up again for the summertime. So let's go check it out. So as of today, this is what our front looks like. Uh, it looks like they got everything repaved. They obviously are still gonna go through and paint all the white lines on the road here. But the roundabout underneath is done. The structure is done. They've moved on to the uh, fireplace, the outdoor seating of the restaurant. And it should only be a matter of time now to where we get that nice K at the top of the building, which in my mind is how they're gonna signify that they are finished with the renovations of this hotel. Something that I did notice this year um, is they have restricted access to this lot a lot uh, this year. I think they had it open for the tail end of Mary Farm, and after that they kind of shuttered it up right away. Uh, it's all kind of making sense now. So they're, uh, they're repaving, they're retarring, and then they'll probably repaint the lines for the parking spaces and have this all ready for when summer starts. Uh, and they're able to open up Soak City and stuff and they extend their hours and they get ready for their big summer season. But right now, this is where they're at. They're cleaning it up. Oh, it looks like they're, um, they've got the, blow, the big industrial blowers out. So they're blowing all the trash and they're gonna go through and they're gonna repave the whole parking structure like this. So I've been scouring uh, websites and internet stuff trying to find out what's gonna be going here and there's no no idea. All this stuff is still over here on the side. The waxworks facade. They got the barn door closed, which means they're probably emptying the warehouse out inside. Um, but everything other than that, everything's bagged up and it looks like it's kind of deteriorating from the weather here. But it's almost the middle of March, so that's usually when we start getting little tidbits for uh, Scary Farm and Horror Nights, right? I think. All right, that's enough messing around. We're gonna go ahead and go through the turnstiles now, head inside the park, maybe get some food and see how the festival operates on a normal, Normal regular old Tuesday. Okay, so that's what we got up to that, uh, got through that first group there to get in. Uh, the lines are fine, but they got all the gates open, so there's that. So they'll push through uh, probably this first hour, and then they'll shut down probably half of these because the it's always the initial surge at opening, and then it just kind of trickles in from there on out for the rest of the day. All right, well that wasn't a fun 10 minutes baking in that little in that little front gate. So we're gonna do what we try to do on opening day and head over to Grizzly Creek because it's been off and on open throughout the weekend. We're hoping that they're keeping it open for the week because we really want that breakfast sandwich. So, fingers crossed, people. All right, we win. All right, here we are. Grizzly Creek, brand new. All right, they got some burgers already made, some chicken tenders, hot dogs. Only they got, they got that Benedict burger with boysenberry hollandaise. Trying to get that hollandaise. I do. I do think this looks nicer. Like at least they have everything kind of displayed out. Apples, garlic bread, display hot dog. That's yours. In the words of Dwight Schrute, question: Do they always have the dole soft serve here? I don't think they did, right? No. I thought so too. I never really looked too deep into this menu, but that seems new to me. I'm with it. A little bit of this action. Yes. There it is. Benedict Burger with the Hollandaise Blueberry Boys. We got two, two sides of Hollandaise because we went and we asked for one on the side. And I, I think she thought we meant just on the side, not in the sandwich. So we didn't see any in the sandwich. It turns out there's some in the sandwich anyway. So we got two extras. Um, probably not gonna dip them in the fries because the fries are cold. It's 10.45 and it's already managed to have cold fries. I don't know how that worked. But we're not here for the fries. We're here for the good stuff. Let me dip the good stuff in more good stuff. Try this bad boy out. 
this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. It was egg, but that's a that's a hamburger patty. Mm -hmm. We thought it was going to be breakfast sausage. Right. I don't really get much hollandaise. The hollandaise tastes like like Indian like pizza. Indian curry. Well, like coconut curry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From India. It's good. Very good. It is good. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's not what I thought it was, but pleasantly surprised. And they just made these two. This was one of the things that you'd noticed was not in the display case when we went in there because they hadn't they they made these to order. There was we ordered one and somebody in front of us that ordered one. So we got these fresh. This is fresh, baby. And while we're in Camp Snoopy, we might as well take a look at what's going on over here. Looks like they're prepping the area for um, the airmail. They're digging a hole, so that must be where it's going to go. Back there in the corner there. You can see the electrical back behind where the guy in the uh, green jacket is standing. So I'm wondering if that's where they're going to pull their power from and maybe put the um, the operating box there. But this is, this is where it's going to go. And then off you can see the theater off in the distance over there. There's 80 bajillion guys out there working on that too. They've got a long way to go. They're still still digging stuff up. But um, when you have that many hands helping, uh, I'm assuming that they're going to have it done fairly soon. All right, so they started pulling up the track of the Grand Sierra Railroad here. You can see they actually, there's actually a tractor back there digging stuff out. We'll go around the other side and look. But uh, the whole track, at least within our eye line here, is pulled up out of the ground. It's still sitting on the ties, but, uh, and it's in the same position that it was in. It's just pulled up out of the ground now. So I don't know if they're if they're going to retrack it um, or some or whatever. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, if you look in the back too, at the end, uh, right after you finish coming over the bridge, that track looks like it's gone. And there's Tenderpaw. There they are. There they go. So they're putting those little bits. So if you look, it looks like they have the same little rebar, the rebar cylinders that they were using at Six Flags to a much smaller extent, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes, at Universal, I mean. Um, but they're putting them in these in these other guards, so they may. Those must be the base for when they put the posts up, because I can see green posts in there. Oh yeah, I see them. Over in the end, so it's only a matter of time before this goes vertical, before they actually start putting this up. And because they have all these rides gone back here, there's one ride back here in this corner where people hang out, and then and then you go over to this side and there's the river run and mud buggies but this is like the forgotten back area of Camp Snoopy and since they were ripping tracks apart last week it doesn't look there's look like there's much more going on uh, it looks like there's some other track that was taken up on the other side there but as far as like the loading platform or anything like that uh, both spikes are gone yeah I think they've got they've got other things they probably have to be dealing with right now uh, and then Maybe they just did the important stuff, the stuff that had to get done, the time-consuming stuff, um, the real like big safety issues, big safety concerns. They got that all out of the way, so now they can take their time with the rest of this because a lot of it is just um, like rebuilding this uh, entryway, the queue, the queue area, and kind of re retheming the whole thing, so it doesn't look like a an old forgotten barn. Gracias por visitar Viesta Village. Oof, the line for accelerator already long. It says 30 minutes on the app. I don't know if that's 30 minutes or not. We'll go around the other side and see. All right, we're gonna take a look at coasters here because we're gonna be here later for, uh, I think Andrea said you wanted the salmon, the Salomon, Solomon salmon, I think is what it's called. People haven't gotten back to this side of the park yet. I think they all stopped at Accelerator. They're working their way over to Hang Time. Hang Time says five minutes. I don't, I, no, that's not five minutes. There's, well, it's also, it's a, it's a, oh, that is not five minutes. <laughs> It's always been a dream of mine to do the pie eating contest and I always miss it because they only do it on weekends but the table's still out here the thing said that they're doing the nuts preserved at four tonight but didn't say anything about the pie eating contest and I want to eat a pie berry you want to write berry tails no line no no no. I want to head underneath berry tails to the factory store to see all of the art that we missed when we came on Friday all right and along the back wall here at the factory store all this awesome art for this year. I've already got my eye on a lot of this stuff, such as Bigfoot's greatest hits. This has always this has always been one of my favorite things to do here. And then over on the side here they always have all of the um, profiles and stuff of the artists that that are submitting. Oh that's cool. But if you do come 
in the next five, six weeks, please make sure to, if you're gonna stop by the arcade or something, just, just come in and look. Just give it a look-see. And a lot of these, you don't have to get the original art. Obviously, a lot of them come with, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollar prints that you can get back in the corner next to the <laughs> entrance. Already got one. But yeah, so they have prints over there in the corner next to the, the cashier station. So just come in, take a look. Yeah, you, these, these guys, I mean, they're super talented artists and they deserve their due. Look what they brought back at the um, River Rapids. But do they work? Yeah. That's a no-go. Well, we can, uh, we can jump in uh, Pony Express here, walk on. And by walk on, I mean, psych! Look at that. When's the last time you saw it come all the way out here? Oh. Holy moly is the word. Oh, look what finally decided to open up at 11. 30 in the morning on a Tuesday. Now that we're now that we're not planning on eating here, it's weird that they got oh, rid of these yeah, these the, benches um, here. The oh, the boysenberry sausage. sausage. <gasps> the That's sausage. right in the crowd. All right, and while we're out here in the woods, let's go look in this random red barn that houses the ghost of Sarah Marshall. Mm -hmm. oh, so this is where everybody isn't. It's the good stuff. This is the not for pregnant ladies oh, section. So you want to just? We haven't even gotten our <laughs> our tasting cards yet. <laughs> We should probably do that. Hey, can we get one of the tasting cards? No, oh, I can hear I can hear them doing boysenberry fun and games around the. Uh, oh, they're doing boysenberry trivia. The Calico Park, and Andrea left me. And I feel like we can't come to Knotts anymore without riding the stagecoach. It's going to become like a staple on our visits now because we went so long without riding it. Now every time we come, this will be my what third time. This will be your third time, and you have yet to ride on the top. We're gonna try to break that streak today. Let's see, let's see if it works. We're second in line. Fair warning: if you do plan on riding the stagecoach, be aware. It always opens at noon, and you need to get here like 20 to 30 minutes uh, beforehand to make sure that you are one of the first people in line. Otherwise, the line immediately goes to 45 minutes. All right. Well, we went by the uh, the Chow House booth and to get the esquite and. They didn't get a ski tay this year. Not today. This year, they did not get a ski tay. So that is not an option at that booth right now. You can get it uh, just the uh, elote, or they have the pulled pork there. Uh oh. <laughs> Jaguar. Jaguar was down today. I don't know if they're working on something back there. Maybe just get it all tuned up. Got to get it all tuned, tuning up the band. So no ski tay means taquitos time. Sometimes you forget just how real it can be at theme parks. You shut down all of uh, the revolution for some uh, somebody's lung debris all over the all over the seat. Let's eat. Okay, so we got the uh, taquitos. From Baja Taqueria. It's Baja Taqueria over the party village. Kind of height. No meal plan, no tasting. No. Uh, as far as Boysenberry Festival, these don't exist. That being said, let's give it a shell. Let's spill it all over the table and then try to eat it. Oh, jeez. I don't taste any boysenberry at all. I feel like these auditioned for the boysenberry festival and didn't get in because they're not berry y enough. So, uh, we're two for three. And while we were eating, we completely forgot that Andrea got us tickets to the train. We almost missed it. We gotta jump in line here. Two bandits divided and conquered. They look they overlook us every time though. See? They know better. Don't mess with the guy with Oakley sunglasses. Oh man, we accelerator going. Oh okay. At first I thought they were taking down all the mesmer stuff. No, it looks like they're just moving it out of the way. It's always fun to be back on the train. They uh, I noticed that they were rolling 41 today, 340's back in the garage. They said that they're actually going to take 340 back to Colorado to get it refurbed, and then they're going to uh, bring it back probably next year. Uh, we did notice that there's three cars on 41 right now instead of five. We weren't sure if that had something to do with the 41's engine payload, if they can't hold five cars, or if they just don't want to stress it out right off the bat. Either way, it's good to have the train back. They're, they're getting close because they're starting to clean up down here on the log ride. They put that little, um, 
that little dip spot, that little elbow at the bottom of the, uh, the drop. So that's in, that's there. There's probably just whatever um, mechanics underneath there in the bottom where those open doors were. And then they should be ready to go. They said that this was gonna be done in March. Uh, so they have a couple weeks still to, to figure it out. But everything that it looks like they were doing before when they drained the water is done. All the little elbow spots are on the, the, the reinforcements are on the outside of the flume. And now it looks like they fixed the drop there, the top and the bottom. Everything looks kind of new. So matter of time now. And then the log rides back. They don't have piggies, but they got sheep. Three sheared, one unsheared. So at least there's something. But we uh, just noticed that the line for Ghost Rider is like non-existent. How weird. They're all an accelerator now. Okay. One last thing before we go. I'm gonna try this chocolate boysenberry cookie. Oh, mm. it's okay. I don't know. There's just there's something special that's happening with knots right now. I can kind of feel it. Uh, I said it earlier in the year that it feels like knots becoming more of a destination and less forgotten about. I know it does. There are times where it seems like there's nobody in the park. But stuff like this, this is exciting. With the amount of projects that Knott's has <laughs> on their plate right now, uh, and the amount of projects that they're basically finishing up, uh, it's a wonder that they don't just collapse under their own weight sometimes. Boysenberry Festival this year so far seems to be kind of a success. It's garnered the attention of a lot of different people, and I think, I think people are starting to figure out now what Knott's is really about. It's kind of... The, the thing with the Boysenberry Festival is this is kind of, this is the explanation of what sets this park apart from all the other parks. It's not just a thrill park. It's not just a theme park. It's kind of weird. But now, I get to go pick up the kiddos and play taxi. It's Taxi Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. So until we meet again, catch you all on that flippity flop. <laughs>